Hey, before we start I would like to say a big thank you to our patrons. Special honor to Eric for this great support. Thank you to Simon Sineda, David Heinzel, Melina Brunner, Robert Hartl, Erich Gangl, Reinhard Bauer, Theresa and Maximilian Heinle. Without your help we can't make our game Cortex and this YouTube tutorial. My name is Simon Gangl and today I want to create a game asset with you. I am talking about a fantasy warhammer weapon which should be implemented to our game Cortex later. I will explain in this tutorial series how to create the 3D object with help of my concept, how to set UV seams and create a UV layout plus UV map and how to draw a hand painted texture with Photoshop and Blender texturing painting tool. Before we start I want to say something about the UVs. I made already two tutorials about basics of the UV editor and what is actually the UV editor about. So if you are completely new to this topic, I would recommend you to watch those videos first. Links are in the description below. Ok, let's add a new workspace and visit the UV image editor. We will create today a unique UV layout so that we can export this and get our UV map as an end result. First I will set seams to edges where I cut faces. No worry, this is only an information for the UV editor. Then I will unwrap or unfold our mesh to the 2D space in the UV editor. There we can place the single UV islands to our UV space. Optimization Consider, a unique UV layout means a fixed definition of pixels to my UV map. If you don't need this for a game production, you don't need to care about texture size. But as a game developer you need to care about texture size and optimization of your UV layout. Are there any parts we can reuse in UV texture space? For this I delete all the faces or disable the mirror modifier because their UV space will get reused. Now I merge all single objects so that I have only one object left. Let's head to the next step. Mark seams. A seam defines where edges can be unwrapped to bring this 3D object to a flat 2D image. For example this ring here on the bottom side of the weapon. The ring is not closed where it hits the pommel of the handle. So why not unfold this immediately? Select your faces you want to unwrap and hit U to call up the UV mapping panel. Then select unwrap. You can see now the blender tries to unwrap it, but you can't bring a circle to a straight line if you not separate it somewhere. So I need to define the edges where I want to cut before unwrapping. Go to edit selection mode and select all edges along one edge flow. Press Ctrl E to call up the edge panel and select mark seam. Switch again to face selection mode, select all and unwrap again. You see now in the UV editor that all faces are unfold in a nice way. Usually you can assign a checker texture to control your UVs. Check always your UV islands that they are not too much distorted. But this topic will be part of the next chapter. Let's start now and set all seams. Just select the edges where you want to cut, press Ctrl E and mark seam. I recommend you to mark seams where you want to change your material or the color and where different mesh structures come together. A good example is the glass part here. Even though they have a different color in our texture later, we have here as well a small peak. Mark all edges along there as a seam. The same is with the side spikes here. If they would be merged by edge, it would be an outstanding element. The tiny spikes get all separated by seam. Let's work on the holdfast system next. Select them and hide the rest by pressing Shift H. I need to mark one edge ring and one edge loop as a seam so that I can flatten the UVs later if you have a pipe geometry like this here. I guess I don't need to explain how to set seams for a square, right?
Okay, next we care about the crystal. Again, I mark the edges where two meshes faces each other. All crystal spikes need to be separated by seam. I separate as well the front, back and body part of the main crystal. Unwrap and UV layout. Please care about the scaling factor of your 3D mesh before you start to unwrap. If you have any scaling value assigned to your 3D object, this will influence your UVs as well. So apply scaling before unwrapping. You can check by yourself if you have marked your seams properly by selecting faces with the L button. It could happen that you forget to mark one edge or two and your defined island is still connected with another island. For sure you are able to unwrap every single island to check the distortion now. But it is much more easier to select everything and unwrap all at the same time. Your UV island get laid out equally to their proper size. I see now that I forget to mark seam on the crystal. Let's fix this quickly. When this is done you can unwrap everything again. A nice tip is to sort your UV islands by pressing UVs. Pack islands. The pack island tool generates an optimized UV layout with non-overlapping islands that tries to efficiently fill the texture space. I need to say that I installed an add-on for the UV editor. It's called Text Tools for Blender and is free to download. I will place the link in the description below. This tool is very new for me as well, but it is very powerful and make it much more easier to work in the UV editor. Sometimes your UV islands are a little bit distorted and it is hard to lay them out perfectly. It is easier for texturing if you straighten some vertices. Reworking the UV islands is always part of the UV layout. For sure we have already a nice UV layout with the pack island tool. But I need to adjust some islands to prepare them for my hand painted texture later. Some UV islands will get only a mono color and others will get some more details. This is a reason why I resize them now. This process can take some time.
export UV map. When you are satisfied with the UV layout, it is time to export a UV map. Go to UVs, export UV layout. Adjust now the properties in the left bottom side. Fill opacity should be 0 and my UV map should be in 2K. File type is PNG, so you can import this to Photoshop now, to start your texture. One last thing. Now you can separate those parts which need to be mirrored again. Add the mirror modifier and apply it. They share the same UV space. This is a good method of reusage UV space so you can place other UV elements, but bigger. That's it! In my next tutorial I will start with the hand painted texture. If you like this little tutorial, please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for further tutorials. We love to creating tutorials, but we need as well some support. Become our patron and help us to help you. Thank you very much for watching, hope to see you again, cheers!